Hey, and welcome to this 20 minute intermediate based vinyasa to activate your whole body. Uh, we're not going to waste any time, we're going to jump straight into it and let's get moving. So we're just going to come onto all fours and we're going to start by warming up the wrists. Ever so quickly, just have the palms face down, fingertips facing forward and you're just going to rock gently forward and back. Pushing into the hands, gently gripping the mat with the fingertips. Start taking a few semicircles from side to side. Start harnessing into the breath. And we're just simply going to turn the hands around so the fingertips are facing towards the knees. And we're just going to sit back onto the heels. And maybe pedal out the elbows one side then the other. Just trying to get some blood into them and some circulation because we will spend a little bit of time on the wrists today. From here, come up onto your heels and just shake out the wrists. And we're going to meet in a tabletop position. So begin in your tabletop, try to have the uh, shoulders stacked over the hands and the hips stacked over the knees. Have the toes slightly tucked. Create a solid foundation and then push in to the hands, bring the knees up ever so slightly, a couple of centimeters would be great. A little protraction in the shoulder blades and the eyes of the elbows facing forward. And you want to bring that navel to spine. So we're engaging our core. So take two breaths here. And we're just slowly going to walk our hands forward, start straightening the legs, coming into a nice high plank. Again, pull the hands towards the feet, the feet towards the hands to engage the front body and start activating your core. From there, you're going to start lowering the knees down and walking the hands back at the same time. And we're going to keep pushing into the hands, roll over the toes, roll over the and coming into a deep squat. From there, we're just going to stand up, squeeze the glutes in on your inhale, lower back down, roll over the toes, coming into that hovering tabletop. One breath on the inhale for a pause. As you exhale, start walking the hands forward, straightening the legs, coming back into that high plank. And again, we're going to take a nice inhale in the high plank. And as we exhale, we're going to come back to that hovering tabletop. Inhale, and then as we exhale, roll over the toes, sitting back into that deep squat. And as we inhale, push into the ground, rise up, squeeze the glutes at the top, and lower back down. It's a great way to warm up the whole body. And we're just going to repeat this pattern for three more times. And we're just beginning to activate our bodies and get ourselves moving in this cool little movement pattern. Take it nice and slow. Feel into your body. Feel what it's doing. I know your shoulders might be talking to you already. And that's perfectly fine. We are here to work. Move and breathe. Hovering tabletop. Straighten the legs. High plank. Start bending the knees. Walk back to the hovering tabletop. Push back into your deepest squat. Push into the feet. Squeeze at the top. And lower back down. This is your last round. Crawling position is always a great way to activate your body organically. We're going to hold a little bit longer in this plank just to get the shoulders working.
coming into that deep squat. Feel how your body is. If you've got a little bit deeper through these squats, if not, that's also perfectly fine. So from your deep squat here, instead of walking into the tabletop, we're gonna walk the hands out and come into our first downward facing dog of practice. So begin to walk the hands out, keep a low base, and then stick the hips up to the sky, push into the ground, gaze between the thumbs, and pedal out your dog. I really like using that little play there as a way of warming up my body. So you can use that just for a little activation midday if you choose to. From there find some stillness and we're going to sweep the right leg up and back. We're going to open up the hip, try to keep the shoulders leveled with each other. Raise that knee up to the sky and bring that heel to your bum. And then we're going to straighten out the leg and bend. There's two. Keep pushing the ground away from you. Three. Four. Five. We're working on our glutes here. Six. The higher you lift your leg, the more work you're going to do. Eight. Nine. Ten. From there we're going to square off the hips. Begin bending that right knee. Roll the shoulders forward. And we're going to step that right foot outside the right hand coming into a nice lizard lunge. You can place your left knee down to the ground if that feels comfortable for your hips. If you want to come up, you can again come up onto the, I can't bring that knee up. And so you're just on um, the toes. You can begin to shift gentle rocks forward and back. You can take a few bounces and make sure the toes are flexed to protect the knee. From here, we're gonna create a solid foundation with the right foot and the left hand. I'm gonna extend that right hand forward, push in to that left hand, eyes of the elbows spinning forward. We're gonna come up onto the, higher onto the toes of the left foot. We're gonna bring that knee into the chest and we're gonna step that left foot through, push into that left shoulder. You might wanna grab the outside of your left foot. And as we exhale, we're gonna step it all the way back. And we're gonna repeat that four more times. So on your inhale, shift forward, bring that knee up into the chest, step it through. Don't collapse into that left shoulder. Exhale back. Inhale, bring the leg through. Inhale, back. Two more. Inhale, bring that knee right up into the chest. Extend it through. And last one. Inhale, bring it through. Push into that left arm. We're gonna hang out here. So the core is gonna be engaging on the left-hand side. You're also gonna be stretching. If you grab the outside of your left foot with your right hand, you're gonna stretch out through the right side body. Take a nice inhale, as you exhale, bring that left foot back. From here, you wanna heel toe the right foot back onto the mat. Place the left foot so it's running away from you and you're gonna rise up into your warrior two. Extend through the shoulders. Try to bring the torso over the hips. Maybe sink a little bit lower into that uh, right leg. Make sure the knee's tracking over the toes. And on your inhale, we're gonna straighten. Exhale, sink a little lower. We're just gonna take 10 of these warrior two squats, as I like to call them. Move with the breath, nice and slow. Keep pushing into the outside edge 
of your left foot. Your shoulders may be talking to you, and that's fine. As I said, we're here to work. You can gaze over the middle finger of your right hand. Bring the shoulder blades onto the back. We'll go for two more. And I hope that was 10. If it's not, let me know in the comment section below. Pivot the hands down to the ground. Create a solid foundation. And we're gonna step that left, right foot back. We're gonna sink the hips, squeeze the glutes. Maybe have the feet a little bit wider. Coming into your upward facing dog. And we're going to stay on the tops of our feet here as we shift the weight forward into our chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Pull the shoulder blades onto the back. And we've got five more. You can come down onto your knees if you would like, but try to stay with it. Make sure you're pushing into those hands so the shoulder blades aren't dropping and sinking. Last one. Upward facing dog. And we're just gonna lower the chest down onto the ground. Bring your arms out into a T position, cactus position. Bring the navel up to the spine ever so slightly. Bring the feet together. And we're gonna draw the shoulder blades onto the back. Lift the feet up and lower back down. The cactus raises. It's two. Three. Whoa. Move of the breath. Use it as your anchor point. There's eight. Nine. Ten. We hold. Squeeze the glutes. Place the hands under the shoulders and we're going to come back to downward facing dog. If you choose to bypass child's pose, do so. You can just push up and roll back. Take a few breaths in your downward facing dog. You may want to pedal out the feet once again. And now we've got all of that fun to do again on the second side. So we're going to raise the left leg up to the sky, point the toes, bend the knee, open up that hip. I'm trying to keep the shoulders level, knee up to the sky, and we're going to straighten it out. There's one, two, three, four, and as I said, the higher you can raise that knee. The more you're working that glute. Seven, eight, nine, ten. We're gonna level off the hips, bend the left knee, start rolling forward, bring that knee into the chest, shift it outside the left elbow, and place it alongside the left foot, coming into your version of lizard lunge and whatever you feel you need to do to open up your hips. At the moment, I'm a big fan of just gentle rocks forward and back. It feels nice in my body, but do what feels good for you and your body. Here's your activation. And just flex the toes, whatever you do to protect that left knee. And here, we're gonna start by creating that solid foundation in the left foot and the right hand. You're gonna bring that left hand up, nice and stable. Shift that left arm forward, straighten out through the right leg. Push into that right hand, bring that knee up into the chest, 
extend it forward, brief little grab, push into that right shoulder or that right hand, and step it back. There's one, two, three, four, shift forward, knee up into the chest, brief grab, last one, shift forward, knee into the chest, and again we're going to hold this one just briefly, not too long, and you can grab the outside of your left foot, your right foot with your left hand, and you can feel that stretch on the left side body. Flex the right foot. Inhale to prepare. Exhale. Step it back. Heel toe the left foot in, and we're coming up into that warrior two. So you either want to have heel to heel alignment or heel to arch. Push down through the outer edge of the right foot. Bend into that left knee. Open up through the arms. And sink into your warrior two. Keep pushing the left knee so it's tracking over the big toe or the toe next to it. You definitely want to be seeing the big toe at the very least. And relax and breathe. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, sink a little bit lower. And as we inhale, we straighten that leg. Exhale. Again, we're gonna go for two, uh, for 10. That was two, that's three. And hopefully I don't lose count this time. But if I do, and we do more or less, or it's not even, feel free to let me know. Your feedback's greatly appreciated. Six. Keep pushing into the outer edge of the right foot as well. Seven. And you want to tuck that left hip under as you come up to straight. Eight. Nine, ten. Straighten the leg. Begin to pivot the feet, uh, the body forward. Bend into that left knee. Place the hands either side of your left foot. Create a solid foundation. Push in and step that left foot back. Coming into a high plank. Turn over the toes and sink the hips down for an upward facing dog. I'm gonna shift the weight forward again, tuck the navel to the spine, and push up to up dog. Some more of these up dog chaturanga push-ups. Make sure the bum is engaged. Two. Three. Four. Three more to go, stick with it. You've got it. Five, make sure the shoulders aren't collapsing up by your ears. Six, last one. Seven, all the way down to our bellies. This time we're gonna extend our arms up in front. So they're gonna come sort of to a 45 degree angle. You wanna have your thumbs pointing to the ceiling. Squeeze the glutes and then you place your head, your forehead to the mat. And we're just gonna raise the shoulders and squeeze the uh, shoulder blades together as we come up. So then we're gonna go for 10 of these. So place your forehead down. I won't be so you can hear me clearer. Squeeze the glutes, little hollow body position. Raise the arms up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and on the last one we hold, ten, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> Done. All the hard work's over. So work your way back into a child's pose and you can hang out here. You can place your forehead to the ground if you'd like. 
we're not here for too long. And we're going to come up onto our knees. We're just going to loosen up the shoulders a little bit. So I'm going to sit on my heels. You can place a bolster or a block underneath your hips. And we're just going to clasp the hands behind us. Interlace the fingers if you can. And we're going to squeeze the palms together, pulling the shoulder blades down. And we're going to open up through the chest. I'll turn it to face you. As you can see my chest being open, you can gaze up to the sky. And you're going to keep reaching for the ground behind you. And you might want to pull the arms away from your back. You can close down the eyes and take a few breaths. One more inhale, and as we exhale, release. And we're going to come back onto our bums, extend the feet out wide for a wide-legged position. And from here, we're just gently going to fold down, have the toes pointing towards the sky. And you want to try to direct your nose down rather than come down and round in the back. You want a nice long spine. And we're just going to come down as low as you can. Chill out here. Again, flexing the feet. You may want to bring the inside of your left arm to the left thigh. Grab the outside of your right foot if you can, the shin, and just gaze underneath the armpit, stretching out through the side body. Uh, stay low to the ground and come over to the other side. Again, this is just options. If wide-legged forward fold is where you want to stay, stay there, breathe, close down the eyes. The hard work is done in terms of physical. Sometimes stillness is even harder. Come back to center. And as we inhale, we come up. It's your choice what you do here. You can take a seat. You can lie back onto your backs for a well-earned Shavasana. And you can close down the eyes for a couple of minutes. You can do a nice big inhale. Pause at the top. And exhale, sigh it out. Inhale, pause at the top. Exhale, sigh it out. Nice big inhale. And exhale, sigh it out. You can stay in your Shavasana if you have a little more time. I'm gonna come into a nice seated position. You can take this option here as well. Close down your eyes and do a little meditation for yourself, depending on the time that you've got. And if this is all the time you've got, then I'd just like to say thank you so much for joining me. Let me know how this was for you. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Thank you for joining me at A Moment to Move.